Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my friends all across the globe today. My name is Leaf, and Leaf is a complete idiot. Yes, that is correct. So I did this really insane speed build for all you guys. I even made sure to include, like, literally everything in there. And then the footage corrupted. Yeah, it, like, absolutely dis disappeared off my entire computer. Uh, not on my external, not on my main drives, nothing. So I figured this would be a wonderful time to kind of just walk through this zoo with you guys and kind of just talk about where we're going to take Sugar Pine. So of course, we're just going to start off right at the beginning, pop right into our little improved Tejid camp. Thank you so much to Kai for that mod. But of course, we start off with the lovely little prairie dogs, and I was so happy to start off with these guys. These guys were absolutely amazing to have right off the bat, and they're just such a fun little addition to our zoo, and you can kind of see them scurrying up and down this little ramp over there. And it was just really fun to kind of just have this dual habitat kind of work like this. Kind of like you have two different sections that both the prairie dogs can get to. And look at them, they're so cute, I love them. They're just absolutely adorable, and I hope you guys love this little exhibit, because it was so fun to make. But of course, moving on from that, we're going to pop out of Tejid Cam, because I just want to fly around all this really quickly. We have the beavers, and of course everyone gets stuck over here. Um, not sure why, I think that may have something to do with the free build mod, so I'll definitely get that fixed up for the final release. And actually, you know what? Screw it! For this one, I will include a link to the zoo so far in the Steam Workshop, so you guys can pop in, steal whatever blueprints you want, and then you can have the time of your life with it. But yes, we have the beavers over here. It's a little bit more of a different exhibit, definitely trying to focus on the water aspect. And can kind of see them swimming over here, even though they're kind of like stuck. Uh, not really sure what they're doing over there, but I love the little waterfall like stuff over here. I just think this exhibit has some nice flow to it. You get it? You get what I mean? You get what I'm saying? Picking up what I'm putting down? A. But of course, we do have a little splash pad over here for the little kids to play in. And it's even linked up to the underwater viewing, so it kind of gives you that little dynamic kind of action over there. So moving on from that, we also have Chuck's Cafe, drinks and food. And I think it actually came out pretty well. And yeah, I gotta fix up all the paths soon, but we'll just pause it for now until we get to some animals. Um, I forgot who actually made this. I believe it was Creative Games, I wanna say. But if not, I will definitely make sure to link that in the description of the Steam Workshop page itself. But this is just a small little cafe that you could come to. Like, it's a nice little part that's right at the start of the zoo, you know, you can grab your drinks, you can grab your food right there, I think it's pretty neat. But of course, over here we have the sea lions. Now the sea lions, I literally could not wait to build with these guys. They are so fun, we can check these guys out. This is actually a seal. Um, I forget why the seal's actually in there, but look at our sea lions, look at her go. I just love the female sea lions so much, they're so slick. But of course, we have a lot of different opportunities to view these guys. You have this wonderful promenade over here, and it's kind of like a boardwalk kind of style. I love using these alternative path textures. So this is a little trick brought to me by Mr. Andrew Wyatt. He is such an incredible builder. If you guys haven't already seen his builds, definitely go check them out. Um, and in addition to that, we have this little pinniped point over here. Obviously, we gotta have a little allit alliteration. Alliteration? Yeah. And we also have some guests kind of going right into the water. That's, you know, it's fine, it's fine. They're going for a little dip. Um, and you can get a really good view of the sea lions over here. And they're just doing their thing. I love it. But of course, right across the way, we have our gray seals. And these guys are absolutely swimming along in their habitat. I really love how well this part of the exhibit came out. And I hope you guys enjoy the little speed build for this. It's coming out tomorrow as of recording this. So, you know, I hope you guys enjoy it. It was a fun little build to do. And of course, I just really want to have both of these guys, as well as the sea lions, right next to each other. This little promenade over here, this little jutting out rock face, it was really fun to make. And I really encourage you guys to kind of do stuff like this. Kind of just provide your guests a little bit of shade, be it natural or be it with some blueprints. Do whatever you guys want. And of course, moving on through here, we have a little secluded area, but we're going to get to all that stuff at last. 
But over here, I just want to show you guys where we ended up on the last episode. So of course we have this little promenade over here. We have the little canoes, so guests can come in, rent some canoes, and take them around this little part of the lake. And this is connected to the moose exhibit, but we'll get there soon enough. And this place does have the opportunity for an interior, but I am way too lazy to actually make it. So hopefully soon enough, I will encourage myself enough to actually decorate in here. I would like to have a little bit of like, you know, museum artifacts and stuff in here. I feel like that would be cute. But of course, we'll wait until later to do that when I'm feeling actually ready for that. Maybe we will have like a little finishing up episode soon enough. But moving on through here, we actually have the Arctic Trail. And this is my favorite part over here when they actually do it if you're walking up to the exhibit over here you can get a incredible view of the wolves over here and these are just the timber wolves um i want to have a little bit of a kind of mixed exhibit not really a mixed but you know side by side comparison so having the timber wolves as well as the arctic wolves right next to each other was a no-brainer and of course we have this beautiful little lookout into their exhibit over here they really do love just running around the entire exhibit and you get some really good shots of them in here i just love popping in my own zoos and taking pictures and stuff like that it's just a really really fun thing to do actually speaking of taking pictures let me actually activate my game filter so it's a little bit more crisp and of course it won't activate right now so i'll do that later for you guys Anyways, the kids get a nice little exhibit view right into the arctic wolves over here. And they can kind of peek their head in. Of course, there's no wolves over here right now, but sometimes there are. But it's just a little taste that the habitat usually has. So, of course, I'm going to go through later. I may even have a whole episode dedicated to making billboards and stuff like that for you guys. Just to really show off my creative process. I haven't really done billboards myself, so it'll be really fun to kind of experiment with that for you guys. Um... Over here we have a little bit of a lower viewing area for the kiddos and you can kind of watch the wolves. Oh, here comes one right now. You can get like nice and close to them right over here and watch them do their thing. I have a scatter tree feeder right over there so you can watch them play with that. Oh, big stretch. Look at him go. But of course, that's just for the kids. The adults, they still get some pretty good views. You can even peek right over here to get a nice unobstructed view of the wolves. Obviously, you can probably climb up here and climb in there, but you would probably get mangled in the process. So this is some anti-climbing over there just to keep the wolves out. Well, to keep the wolves in and the guests out, even though the guests can probably climb in there. And I love the rocks over here, just like integrating the faux rock boulders with the regular rocks. It turned out so well and it gives it such a nice little texture and love it. Uh, so moving on into this little part over here, I kind of went right over the steeple over there. But you get some really nice views and you can kind of look at where the trail started over there. I just love the elevation change that you see between up and down. It's just pretty neat. And then over here, this is one of my favorite views so far. You got this beautiful view right into like this little lake area. I think it came out so well. I think that's where we ended the last episode off. I can't really be too sure. But of course, you get to look at like the building over there. I think it's coming out pretty neat. The boathouse, as I like to call it. Well, of course, this is a star over here. Uh, by the way, speaking of stars, another Andrew Wyatt creation over here. Just a nice little bench set. Um, over here, we actually get a wonderful view into the Arctic Wolf exhibit. And I wanted to keep everything nice and heavily planted just to make sure it feels alive in here. Because usually the Arctic Wolves, they don't really live in too many forested areas. But for the sake of the zoo, and for the sake of designing, I really wanted to have them in a nice big forested area. I think it came out pretty well. And of course we have this little planter over here with a bunch of gravel stones and stuff like that. Just generally keeping it nice and planted. But of course no actual plants in here because there's not really any sunlight. Speaking of sunlight, we have another skylight over there framed with some wood to keep it nice and centered off. And over here we get the last view of the Arctic Wolves and we can actually see pronghorn feeder right there i love that thing so much and we can see the wolves kind of doing their thing over there i do apologize if you hear a siren in the background it is way too hot in my room right now and i need the window open but of course we gotta get to the meat and potatoes that is this exhibit over here so if we pop down over here we can actually see the entrance to the boathouse right there but we have this little area over here and i love how quaint this is so I just copied the beaver shade structure and brought it back over here. 
Um, just, uh, you know, be smarter about the pieces. And, of course, you can get a wonderful little glimpse into the moose habitat right now. Of course, we don't really have too many friends over here visiting us. They kind of like to come up here pretty often. But we see the big bull right back there. So we'll actually go see him from the covered bridge area. So we're just going to pop up here. We're going to speed it up a little bit. Um, and over here, of course, we do have the elevated area for the gray seal doing. Just watching them do their thing. Watching them do a little swim swim. I love them. I love them so much. But of course, down here, a few more benches. I love these guys so much. Um, I just wish we had like the ability to make our own benches. Wouldn't that be cool, right? Uh, so over here, we have a covered bridge. Now, I base this off of a covered bridge in Vermont. I actually forget the name of it, but you start to get some amazing vistas into the moose habitat over there. And I think that this shot alone is really really insane. In fact, I think I'm going to take a picture over here so you guys can kind of see my picture taking process, you know? I gotta show you guys all my processes, you know? Just making sure that you guys understand how I am as a builder. And of course, just gonna snap it like that. Beautiful! Of course, nothing crazy in here. I may fill it up with some decorations. may even set up like a shop stand or something in there. I know like a lot of covered bridges up in New Hampshire and Maine usually turn them into like shops, kind of like gift shops and stuff like that because they are such an iconic piece of architecture from that area. Um, and yeah, I'll probably fill this up with some plushies and shirts and stuff like that. But of course we can see a moose like burying its head in the ground. I thought that was more ostriches than anything. Am I right guys? But of course we can start to see these beautiful vistas start to come through with the river. So I did want to reinforce this glass a little bit, so I did include some mesh inside of the glass pieces themselves. You can kind of see it right there. Uh, just a way to kind of give it a little bit more character, give it a little bit more of a story. Maybe someone broke into the exhibit one time and kind of fell down, so they decided to reinforce it a little bit more. And of course we have this beautiful waterfall over there. And of course I'm going to carry that over going through the mountains and stuff like that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about over here. So of course we get some wonderful views in here. I think I may actually have the guest path come up a little bit closer to the fence just so the guests can get a few more views of the moose because as it stands there are only a couple main areas. There's this little shade structure over here. There's a covered bridge and there's over here. So let's talk about over here for a little bit. So the plan for this area is to have a little bit more of an Arctic area. And this is basically my Arctic pack zoo as well. So I really do want to include the doll sheep, the reindeer, and the polar bear. Just because they are beautiful, beautiful animals. And of course, how could we forget the Arctic fox? We got to get those guys in here. They are so beautiful, so fluffy. And of course, I just want to throw them right there. But of course... This will also work alongside this exhibit as a secondary viewing platform. So even if you do take the other route, you still get to check out the moose because this exhibit is friggin huge and it deserves to be loved. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry guys, I love taking pictures and this is just a wonderful one at that. But I really do hope you guys are enjoying how this is coming out. This is such a fun zoo to build for. And you guys are so fun to build for. Oh my god. I love seeing you guys share the love. I love seeing you guys enjoy what I'm putting out there. Sugar Pine Zoo is such a fun little project. And I'm so excited you guys get to actually hop in here now. So of course I will be including the description. Well, I will be including the workshop in the description for this build. And yeah, now in other terms of future projects, so of course the Arctic area is going to take up like this area over here. I gotta have the polar bears give, I gotta give the polar bears like a huge area to live in. Of course, you know, because Frontier makes us and because, I don't know, they're just so fun to build for. I might do multiple pens and stuff like that. That sounds pretty fun. But over here, I'm going to have a little bit more of North American animals. I definitely do want to have bison and pronghorns, cougars. Got to have the rest of, like, the North America animal pack animals. I'm already starting to forget them. But, of course, we do have this handy-dandy feature over here to see what we can build for. And, of course, we still do have a lot of different animals to build for. I would love to do a little bit of a desert house with the giant desert hairy scorpion, Elon monster, and stuff like that. Maybe even integrate, like, the iguanas and stuff just to really give us, like, you know, a little bit more purpose. But, again, no mods in this zoo. I just want to keep it modless for now. You know, maybe later in the time. Later in the time. Wow. 
uh, we can actually integrate them later. But for the time being, I definitely do want to have an alligator exhibit. That's going to be really cool to have. But this zoo is I, it's coming along pretty well. So I really do hope you guys are enjoying. We're going to end this on a beautiful shot of our moose over here. Oh, and before we get going, by the way, uh, yeah, this it's not really logical, this river, but I will have it kind of flowing out towards that way. As you can probably tell from the speed build on the last episode, I really did like to change this out a lot. So I am trying to get more comfortable with the idea that nothing is really set in stone. And I feel like that's a very, very interesting perspective to have when you're working in Planet Zoo like this. Sometimes you just don't want to touch a build after you're done with it but I would love to go back and keep on constantly improving everything. But I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are new here, welcome. I really do appreciate my new fans. Welcome to the little leaf pile. If you guys are interested in following this zoo to completion, definitely do drop a subscribe, drop a like, maybe it'll appear in your feed more often. And who knows, maybe I'll see you guys with another project sometime in the future. But with that being said, we're going to end it on our beautiful Mies over here. We'll bring one to land so we can actually see the full glory of them. And you know what? I cannot wait to see you guys in the next episode. And of course, they're in the dark. Let's change that up a little bit. But anyways, guys, I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.